Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we went over the edit text view. Um, there's a space between those two words. Uh, and put it in the layout, connected it um, to the UI, uh, excuse me, it connected it to the code, and actually uh, on our button click, we interacted with that edit text. Uh, we fetch the text, we have primitive error handling, and then uh, if we have a message, we um, display it to the user. However, there was one thing that I mentioned um, that you may have caught. Um, screen looks pretty good here, but when we click on this edit text, the keyboard has to pop up, right? Um, in an emulator, you can actually input via the keyboard, uh, so it doesn't really become a problem, uh, you know, like right now, but in a regular physical device, you would actually have the user typing on the keyboard. Uh, so, so it has to show in order for the user to input some text, but as you can see here, this entire uh, uh, view, this entire layout has now been completely pushed up the width, or sorry, the height of this um, soft keyboard. And this has forever been a pain point in um, just Android development in general, and not until recently did they make it even remotely simple to uh, easily hide or close this um, keyboard programmatically or maybe uh, even have some kind of a listener to detect exactly where this uh, keyboard is or if it's half, you know, if, if, if it's uh, retracting or expanding, um, etc. So um, we, can, we can fix that though. So if we take a look at this layout here, the hierarchy, we have uh, the constraint layout and everything here being siblings to one another, right? There's nothing, there's no views nested inside of one another other than all of these views nested inside of the parent constraint layout. Um, if we actually add, um, so if we take all of these views and actually uh, command X to cut and copy to the clipboard, we can add the view called a scroll view. Uh, I'm going to set the width and the height to be match parent. And then inside here, unfortunately, we can't just paste all of these views. Um, you see here that nothing actually shows up on the uh, in the preview and yep, the little tooltip that pops up um, which I thought was going to be an error, says a scroll view can only have one child. So this is uh, a little unfortunate, however, we actually can uh, get around that quite easily. Uh, if we add another constraint layout inside of this layout, uh, we can actually uh, then put all of our views back inside this one and everything will work uh, the way that it was beforehand, before we put the scroll view in. So now we're actually kind of getting into the nesting of views here and uh, now that I think about it we could probably make the scroll view the absolute parent and then the constraint layout to be the child of that and then all of these views inside of it so we would actually remove this first layer um, but for the purposes of this video uh, we're really kind of covering the scroll view and what it does so it's um, it's uh, it, it's not the end of the world to take a small performance hit um, what happened to our UI? That looks a little crazy. Uh, unfortunately, we kind of scrunched things up again, and even though this scroll view, if you can see, takes up the entire parent, the immediate child of it, now the constraint layout, actually ends here. If you can see that blue line at the bottom, uh, for some reason, it actually uh, basically is acting as if it's wrap content and it's actually giving us a little warning here saying that we should be using wrap content instead of match parent. So there's a little bit of funkiness going on here uh, between these two elements being uh, you know a, a parent child uh, having the parent child relationship at this very moment. There is one uh, attribute here on the scroll view that we're missing and it's called fill viewport. And if we set that to true, now this uh, constraint layout is actually going to be the same size as the uh, scroll view. And if we, again, we can command click, if we 
can command click into the viewport uh, attribute says defines whether the scroll view should stretch its content to fill the viewport. And uh, in the the viewport in this case, since we set it to a match, since we set the view to be match parent match parent, the viewport was the entire screen. Uh, so without this one little attribute, our um, layout gets unbelievably wonky. And then once we add that one back in, everything looks better. So. Uh, with just this simple addition to the layout, no changes to code, I mean, there isn't a whole lot of code, but there's absolutely no changes to the code at the moment. All we did was uh, add this new scroll view, and then we had to add another you know, constraint layout because of the um, issue that a scroll view has where it can only have one child, a direct child. Uh, I think that ran. So now if we click it, um, look at that the UI can actually handle it. And instead of this entire thing getting shifted up, um, this, uh, this layout is now, uh, you know, fine, uh, looks normal. We can, just like how we normally would, we could, uh, you know, interact with our UI in the way that we want. Uh, one thing I want to show here is there is no scrolling action going on here. I don't know if if you can tell, um, but I'm actually clicking and trying to drag in the vertical direction to simulate a scroll, uh, but nothing's actually moving. And that's because even with this thing fully expanded, um, there's still enough room for, based upon how we've set up all these attributes, there's still enough room for all of this stuff to um, just like remain on screen and there's no reason for it to scroll. So I'm thinking one way we can do that is if instead of, uh, 48 dp, we'll do 78 dp, and we rerun the application. That's going to push it further from the subtitle, so hopefully when the, um, when the keyboard comes up, this will now, uh, no, wow, okay, let's do 178. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So now you can actually see. I mean, it's it's not a it's not, it's not a great UI, um, but now you can actually see the fact that the distance here, the 178 dp between the subtitle and the bottom of or the top of this um, image view, pushes the rest of this image view actually off of the like visible screen because of this keyboard. So you can actually see, especially if you look on the right, as I'm scrolling, you can see the scroll bars. So you can actually see the bounds of the view, um, uh, the scroll view itself. And you know we can kind of see it working in action, whereas before uh, it just looked like the UI was handling things better. Um, but really, it was the scroll view actually like basically shrinking and allowing for all of its uh, views to to remain in place instead of being thrown off when this additional screen real estate was taken up by some system uh, UI. So um, not a glorious example at the moment. But uh, as far as the visual of it, but uh, it for sure gets the point across that the scroll view allows for this uh, just much better approach. And now, if we try to scroll um, again, at this point, you know everything is uh, laid out the way that it's supposed to. There's no reason that it needs to scroll uh, vertically. Uh, all, everything is is uh, visible to the user that the system detects. So there's no there's no scroll uh, required. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this back to our 48 dp to keep it um, the way that we had it before. Uh, there you go. You saw this actually working in place. The uh, apply changes and restart the activity. Uh, we changed it from 178 back to 48, and you actually saw this image view snap back. So you can see how. Um, when you're making minor changes that you can either, you know, do the scorched earth policy and completely kill the app and rerun it. Um, or you can kind of, uh, you know, just like reapply some changes that have been made and it, and it provides for a more seamless, um, you know, experience for you as the developer to, um, you know, continue doing whatever it was you were doing. So, um, we keep this one short, keep this one quick. Uh, but we got to show off the, um, the scroll view and all of its glory and its capability to keep the UI um, the way the user would expect, right? As opposed to basically having this entire thing shift up 
when the keyboard opens. So um, there are a couple other ways to accomplish what we just did, uh, but the scroll view is oftentimes um, the easiest and sometimes the most obvious or straightforward, just at least based on the name. Uh, so uh, happy to show it off for you there. And uh, we will continue uh, building out this screen in the next one. And uh, I'll, I'll see you there.